feature friend over here, so it's a little easier to follow. Um, it's feedback I got from you guys last class, so I will continue to do it this way. Um, okay, so we finished up talking about the gas laws from last class, so now we have one more um, to talk about, which is called Avogadro's Principle, and this deals with moles. And as you should have kind of been picking up already um, in this class, moles are super, super important. So this is going to be um, kind of a way to incorporate moles into now talking about gases. So if we take a look over here, okay. it's telling us that when measured at the same temperature and pressure, equal volumes of gases contain equal numbers of moles. Okay, and so what that means is if you look up here at our, um, at our equation, we can read it as uh, one mole of H2 plus one mole of Cl2 gives us two moles of HCl, right? Because if we remember the units on the coefficients are moles. But we can also, what this, what Avogadro's principle is telling us is that we can also read this as one volume of H2 plus one volume of Cl2 gives us two volume of HCl. So that's what this is telling us, all right? And I can even write as a little reminder over here um, also that one mole H2 and then so I'm just writing out in words what I said plus one mole Cl2 gives us two mole of HCl. So that's what we already knew, right? And now Avogadro's principle is telling us down here, this new part, that we can exchange that word mole for volume. All right, so now if, we've been, if we do what we've been doing before and write this out, we can say N. So N, and just as a reminder, N, whenever we write N, that stands for the number of moles. Okay, so that's lowercase n, what that means. So n over v equals some constant c, right? That looks familiar as to what we've been doing with our other gas laws. And then it now, as we know, right, we can set one instance equal to another instance, drop out that c, and this is what we are left with. And this right here is Avogadro's principle. All right, so that is our new um, kind of uh, law we're gonna be looking at. And if we take a look, we know that these are proportional, right? So as, as N gets bigger, V gets bigger. So we could write over here. Proportional, STP, which stands for standard temperature and pressure. So I'm gonna walk us through this. Now, STP is something that is very important. And when we write that acronym, you're gonna to wanna to know and kind of remember what that means. So let's take a look. So it's telling us at 760 Tor, which um, if we remember our conversions, um, so if we have 760 Tor, how many atmospheres is that? One. One, right. I. I believe that was Aaron. Thank you. Um, so that is one atmosphere. So I write over here. This is one atmosphere. And that is what we are going to want to refer to as standard pressure. Okay, so that is standard pressure. And now if we keep going along, because STP, standard temperature and pressure, so now we need to take a look at what that temperature is. And it's telling us that the temperature is 273 Kelvin, which if you were to convert to, Kel to Celsius, it would be oh, zero degrees Celsius. 
And again, like I said, that is now this is, this is going to be our standard temperature. And it's also telling us that at this standard temperature and pressure, a mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. Okay, so only though one mole of any gas. And this I'm going to use my red pen. That's super important. This, all of this is only true at STP. Okay, so all of that that we just went through in red, so one atmosphere, 273 Kelvin, uh, and having one mole of any gas occupying 22.4 liters of space, that is all true at STP. All right, so that's like, that is definitely something I would um, commit to memory. All right. So now that we have kind of all of these um, kind of individual gas laws kind of floating around in our head, we can combine them to, to make what is called the ideal gas law. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write all of the laws we've been working with so far. So we have Boyle's law, right? So PV equals C. We have P over T equals C. We have V over T equals C. And now we just did Avogadro's principle, which is number of moles, which is lowercase n over V equals C. All right, so those are all of the laws that we've been kind of looking at, doing practice with. And if we, you know, put them all in a blender and mix them all together and, you know, spit it back out, we're gonna get the ideal gas law, which looks like this, PV equals NR Okay, and this R that you probably, that you have not seen before, right here, that is what we call the universal gas constant, and that I'm going to talk about in just a minute, um, but that is something that is going to be very, very unit specific, because if you look at this, right, all of these different variables, they all have different units, so this universal gas constant R, we're going to want to make sure that we have the right units for R. So this way, it, everything can cancel and we can end up with the units that we are looking for. All right, so if we take a look, we take a look over here on the left, it's telling us the different parts. I'm looking right here. It's telling us the different uh, Variables in the ideal gas law, as you can tell, it contains all of the ones we've been talking about and their units that they need to be in in order to use the ideal gas law. So let's take a closer look. So it's telling me that N symbolizes the number of moles, right? We just talked about that. Lowercase n tells us um, my number of moles. And if we take a look at pressure, it's telling us in order to use pressure, pressure must be in atmospheres. So whenever we are using the ideal gas law and we are dealing with a pressure, we must convert it into atmospheres. And that is not something a problem would need to tell you. That is just something that is, um, that we're assuming that you already know, right? Because in order to use this ideal gas law, these are all conditions that must be met. So if we keep looking, it's telling us volume must be in liters. So it cannot be in milliliters. It cannot be in anything else. It must be in liters. This next one should not come as a surprise to any of you. The temperature must be in Kelvin, right? That's something that we've been noticing um, lately in kind of all these problems that Kelvin is definitely our friend when we're dealing with gases. Um, so 
converting everything to Kelvin. And now we have gotten to ARP, right? Which is what I was just talking about as what is known as the universal gas constant. And I'm actually gonna rewrite this so we can see these units a little bit better. So I'm gonna rewrite this. So I'm gonna have R equals, so 0 0.0821. And now here comes my units. So I have liters times atmospheres over moles Kelvin. Okay, and if we look, I have my um, number of moles, which is right there. I have my pressure in atmospheres, which is right there. I have my temperature in Kelvin, which is right there. And I have my volume in liters. So when I use this equation, all of my units will cancel out. So it is very, very, very important. I'm gonna circle this in red to realize that this equation is very unit specific. So if you think that, you know, us telling you to make sure you have all your units written down in the past was important, now it's even more important, right? Because if, as you can see, we have four different units we're dealing with and we want to make sure that they all cancel out um, how we want them to. And additionally, this equation has moles involved in it, right? So I'm going to draw a little arrow over here. This is why we use the ideal gas law. So when moles are involved, right, we want to use the ideal gas law. So this when moles or an amount and an amount being in grams or this looks like divided i'm just going to put or because i don't want you to get confused um so in moles or an amount of something is involved use the ideal gas law, right? Because it incorporates moles with everything else we've been talking about. All right, and just as a little, um, Kind of way to remember what the ideal gas law is um if you just remember like i know this is going to sound silly but hopefully it sticks with some of you like pivnert just like pivnert like pv equals nrt i don't know that has stuck with me since i was a sophomore in high school and yeah pivnert never forgotten the ideal gas law if i just remember that little little phrase kind of like how like hankel Griff, how you remember the diatomic elements pivnert makes you remember the ideal gas law there you go. Um, but we will we'll walk through an example of how we're going to want to apply the ideal gas law. And this example is really broken down so you can kind of see where all the units are coming from and uh, how we're going to want to solve these problems. So it says that a sample of um, oxygen at 21.5 degrees Celsius and 785 Tor has a volume of 435 milliliters, how many moles? So right away, I know what I'm solving for, how many moles of oxygen are in this sample. And then it also wants to know how many grams, but the ideal gas law is gonna tell us how many moles. So first we're going to want to figure out how many moles we're working with. And then once we have figured out how many moles, we can easily turn that into grams of oxygen, okay? So if we take a look over here, Right, this is just rearranged, but we know that this is Pivnert, PV equals NRT. Right, that's just rearranged to solve for N, but we know that that's where that's coming from. So let's let's walk through the steps of how we're gonna solve this. 
So first it's saying convert tor to atmospheres, right? Because we remember that we want pressure in the units of atmospheres. So I'm just gonna rewrite this because I don't like um, how it looks over there. So I'm just gonna say 785 tor, and then I'm gonna use my conversion because I know that one atmosphere, as Aaron told me earlier, is the same as 760 tor. And my units of torque cancel. And if I plug this into my calculator, see what I get, 785 divided by 760, 1.03 atmospheres. Okay, so now I have my pressure in the correct units. So I'm looking good so far. So now let's keep going. Now I want to convert my Celsius into Kelvin, right? Because Celsius is not what we, what we wanna be working with right now, we wanna be in Kelvin. So I have my 21.5, and then I wanna add 273. If I do that, I get 294.5, Kelvin. All right, so I'm looking good so far. I have atmospheres at Kelvin. I need to keep going. So it's giving me milliliters, but I do not want milliliters. I want liters. So I can take 435 milliliters. I know that in one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. I can cancel my units and I get 0.435 liters. Okay, so, so far my units are looking a lot better, right? We're kind of cleaning them up a little bit, putting them how we want them. And now I need to solve for moles. So it already solved over here. It already solved the ideal gas law for N. So right now we can just plug in our values and solve for N. So if we do that, we have N equals, so we have, first we have my pressure. And then it's, we have volume. All over, okay, so now I have my universal uh, gas constant, right? That's that R value. And if I were to look at the other page, it is 0 0.0821. And now everyone watch super closely how I write the units, right? Because this is where we wanna make sure we're getting these units right, so it's liters times atmospheres over moles Kelvin. And I promise after a few times writing it, you'll just, you'll memorize it easier than you think. It just takes a few times writing it and you'll get it. Um, and our last variable is temperature, which is uh, 294.5 Kelvin. Okay, so I want someone to tell me what they get. So take a second and, and uh, Put this in your calculator and tell me what you get. Whenever anyone gets an answer, feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Is it 0 0.02 moles? 0 0.02, yes. Yes, you rounded it a little more than I did, but that's fine. Um, so I, I'm i going to write 0 0.0186 moles of oxygen. So hopefully everyone is getting that. If we want to see how these units are canceling. So... We have atmospheres on the top, and then it's in our um, numerator that is in our denominator, so those cancel. And if we take a look at liters, those cancel over there. 
And now I know this is trying to remember how things cancel, right, in math. But if our uh, unit, a unit over here, let's do this, right, that can cancel with the unit in the denominator because it is in the denominator of the denominator. <laughs> so if you need to brush up on how those cancel, you can, I can explain that to you more after the class, but for right now, that is how those units cancel. And now you are left with the units of moles. But we are not quite done with this problem because, so it asks us for moles of oxygen, but it also asks us for grams of oxygen. And that is just a um, little conversion using our molar mass. So we have 0 0.0186 moles of oxygen. And if we remember our molar mass um, of oxygen is 16, but it is a, a diatomic, so O2, so it would be 32. Grams of oxygen always, molar mass is always per one mole. So my units cancel. And let's see what I'm left with. I'm left with zero point five nine three grams of oxygen. So my two answers are here and here. And that last step converting to grams, that's nothing new. That's what we were doing in, in our stoic in our stoichiometry unit, um, just using molar mass to convert to grams. All right, does anyone have any questions up to this point? We're gonna do one um, other, I'm gonna let you all try one practice problem and then we're going to um, switch gears and watch another lab. My two biggest pieces of advice with this would say write your units and rearrange to solve the for the variable that you um, want. If you do those two things, you should be golden. But for right now, I want everyone to insert a page just anywhere in their notes is fine, just to give us some room. Um, so insert a page and I'm going to give you a question that I want you to work on on your own. So if there is 21.5 grams of neon in a 3.5 liter flask, at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the pressure? So take a second, read through it, see how you would want to solve it, and then we'll go through it as a class.
is do we need a minute another minute or so or are we good Try and finish up in the next 30 seconds and then we'll go over it. All right, someone tell me how I should start this problem. All right, looks like we're back in lab here. Iron Man's taking a little ice bath.